News. Salman Rushdie survives attack by Iran regime sympathizer. On August 12th, Salman Rushdie, the famed dissident author, was attacked in a vicious stabbing during a lecture in New York State. The attacker was identified as 24-year-old Hadi Matar. According to eyewitnesses, Matar stabbed slash punched Rushdie more than 10 times. Despite being caught right after the attack, Matar pled not guilty during his arraignment on August 18th. In an interview with the New York Post, Matar said he admires Iran's previous supreme leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, who infamously issued the religious ruling, or fatwa, which called for the murder of Rushdie in response to his quote-unquote blasphemous novel, The Satanic Verses. The Islamic Republic of Iran has denied allegations that it was involved in Rushdie's attack. However, Vice News reported that anonymous European and Middle Eastern intelligence officials confirmed that Matar communicated directly with members of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC. More precise and specific information about the attacker's motives is not known at this time. According to Andrew Wiley, Rushdie's literary agent, his recovery is, quote, headed in the right direction. The author suffered a liver uh, injury and severed nerves in his arms, and Wiley added that he might lose an eye. Well, when the attack took place, Rushdie was about to deliver a lecture at the um, Chautauqua, Chautauqua Institution in Chautauqua, New York. Ironically, the scheduled topic of discussion was how the United States is a haven for exiled writers and artists. Okay, I have... So this is old news, but there's a lot of discussion about this that we could analyze and we could take this into a million different directions, okay? We could talk about the original fatwa and a lot of little details that people don't know about that, okay? The political motivation behind that. We could talk about how Islamic this is because I might have some disagreements with other people, with a lot of ex-Muslims about how Islamic this um, act was. And we could talk about the reactions by of Muslims, but also I have criticism from the reactions of reactions by critics of Islam, okay? Because I feel like I've noticed like there is an attempt to show by critics of Islam that all Muslims are celebrating this. But I have seen Muslims, not just random Muslims, like big institutions and organizations condemning this, okay? I've seen major YouTubers, major um, scholars um, condemning this, okay? So, I mean, I do show the ones that are celebrating this, but I think if we want to be honest to our audience, if you show one side and you don't show the other, you're kind of doing your audience at the service as well. So there are many Muslims um, that are condemning this. So I think it would be fair for us to mention that as well. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's important to mention. And I also wanted to say yeah, that, like, yes, this is old news, but we have to cover it because we were off for a week because of going to the conference. And so like we yeah. still had to do our own coverage of this and it was kind of to our benefit because I was waiting for more information to come out about the motive. Unfortunately, not that much more has come forward in terms of specifics, but this report by Vice that cited different Middle Eastern and European security officials and diplomats was extremely interesting to me because they were saying that there's some evidence, you know, anonymous sources, who knows, who knows, that he was in communication with people in the Quds Force and that the security officials were saying that this has all the all the marks of a quote-unquote guided attack where people indirectly direct their attention towards a target, you know, mm. kind of indirectly inform them of how to go about doing this kind of thing, but not explicitly giving instructions, you know, enough to kind of have plausible deniability, blah, blah, blah. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, I, but again, like Dia saying in the live chat, that's not verified yet, but that's some of the better information that we can find so far. And that he has given statements that 
the the attacker has given statements that support Khomeini. Um, okay, but, but he that, doesn't... He was, here's the thing. Even if that is proved, I don't know how big of a deal that is, okay? Because the Quds Force or the IRGC is a ton of people, okay? Yeah. And they are active on social media, right? So, and they have a lot of, like, they have people, a lot of opinions, right? And they're just, like, talking about these things on social media and on Clubhouse especially, right? And they may be suggesting things to each other. And some of them will be influenced by each other. I mean, it could be. I mean, I I am in touch with people from God's Force. <laughs> like it was. I mean, you, well, because they, I mean, they come and debate you on Clubhouse, right? I mean, they're they're in our rooms on a Persian show in the Clubhouse. Like I'm pretty sure they're there, right? I'm pretty sure I talked to some of them, right? But like, what? How? What are the? When you're saying you're in contact with them, um, I mean, everyone's influencing each other's opinion. Like, is like. Just being in, in touch with somebody from God's Force, that it doesn't necessarily mean it could, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there were higher ups within the God's Force that made this intentional yeah. attempt to make something like this happen. I mean, like, I have friends who were conscripted into the IRGC. Like, yeah, I talked to them, go. but they didn't yeah. have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, I don't know. That's too. too uh... By the way, I want to show you. Yeah, go on. Go ahead. I want to show you one reaction, Iranian newspaper. Yes, this is important. Yeah, so this is the Iranian one Iranian newspaper, uh, Iranian newspaper called Jama Jam, which is published by uh, the Islamic Republic's broadcasting official national broadcasting, like the the radio newspaper, the radio and TV. Um, so this is the picture that they had under cover. And it said under it, it says Cheshme Shaitan Kurshot, which means the eye of the devil has been blinded. Oh my gosh. So this is what the, this is what they had on the on their cover. This is what like on the celebrating this. It, well, it's kind of uh, I don't know. To me, I don't that this doesn't get a bad big reaction out of me because I've seen what they post and how they illustrate jewish people so i'm like oh this is nothing in comparison <laughs> i do find it kind of ironic though if he does lose an eye then people are going to start saying that he's the jaw yeah but the jaw I mean, has one eye like yeah but that's proof. Just, okay. it's proof that he is the antichrist <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know if they would okay so I, who would do that like first of all the Iranian regime doesn't want to celebrate this, okay? So they let, they want to kind of celebrate it and they don't want to celebrate it, okay? But this is because state media. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. Oh. They use their media as kind of like a few degrees of separation from the official statement from, like, it's not like a official government representative coming out and saying like, yay, we did it, people, right? Like, it's not like that, right? So they want, they have... This is they use some of their newspapers, especially Kehan newspaper, for people mm. to know what the kind of the position of the regime is without them officially say it, right? Because they want to be able to say it without actually take it, like saying it so much that it has an international cost to for them. So like so it's plausible deniability. That's what it is. Like, yeah, this is just our newspapers, it's not us saying so like the international community cannot come and say like, oh my God, look at what Khamenei or like the president is saying, right? So it's kind of like that. Um, that that's a pretty sorry yeah. excuse. One thing that I thought was very interesting because this is something you talk about a lot, Armin, but I haven't seen a lot of other sources talking about. So this is, I'm, I want to read just a slight chunk from um, uh, this article in Vice. So this is a quote, quote, there seems to be a process where an individual members of various agencies plan and activate their own operations, like the recent Bolton thing, where Iranian guys were offered money to hit man acting like John Wick is a real thing, the official said, referencing the indictment unsealed last week that accused a member of the Quds Force of attempting to pay $300,000 to assassins he believed worked for a Mexican drug cartel to target former national security advisor John Bolton. So this is what you talk about all the time is that there are kind of rogue people within mm -hmm. different agencies that seem to be going off and doing their own thing for ideological reasons. 
And then yeah. this may not be entirely representative of the state apparatus itself. And I was like, oh my yes. God, Armin talks about this all the time. And finally, there's someone else who's like piecing this together. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. So thank you for confirming my analysis. Like you just come to just come to our channel. <laughs> um, no, but it just it it does seem like that. Um, this will be costly to them. Like it's not. I, I have to also mention, like within the Iranian um, pro regime people, there uh, there's a huge conspiracy of, of made up, like a stupid conspiracy, but it's telling that this is a conspiracy. That this is the Americans have done this. The Americans oh, yeah. are doing the, the Americans are doing this to Salman Rushdie because they don't want the JCPOA deal to go through. Like th this is an inconvenient time for the Iranians for something like this to happen. There's also another conspiracy that the Iranian regime is doing this and making it on purpose fail. Okay, because they want to show the American regime that what they will have to deal with if they are not negotiating with the Iranian regime, but they also don't want to pay the cost of being successful at taking out Masih Alinejad or taking out Salman Rushdie or taking out uh, John Bolton. Okay. They want to do these really um, amateur attempt and fail at um, take carrying out these assassinations, like hiring people mm -hmm. that they are almost sure are not going to be able to do it just so that it's like a warning because I don't know if you know this, Susanna, United States, <laughs> in the JCPOA deal, one of the one of the things that United States was asking for Iran to guarantee was not to target Americans, American civilians. Okay, what? <laughs> Come on. I'm walking away. This is bullshit. This is what we have to ask for. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> It gets worse. It gets worse. Come back. Come back. Why are we negotiating with these freaking terrorists? Oh my no. gosh. Uh, okay. Well. Okay. I'm we bracing to, myself yeah. for the second part. Yeah, no okay, what's yeah, part you two? You kind of have to. You kind of have to. Um, the part two is that Iran said no. We can't guarantee that. <laughs> Oh no! Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, come back, come back. God damn, the bar is so low. <laughs> yeah, and the deal is still going through with Iran not guaranteeing that. So technically, the GCPOA deal it seems like it's going to be signed. I don't know. I keep we're not a roller coaster with this deal. If it Just gets signed. <laughs> if, it, if it gets signed, it's going to get signed with Iran saying officially saying that we don't guarantee not targeting your civilians yeah uh it's not <laughs> okay yeah that's what happened. you just broke me like we're gonna move on and cover other stories but inside i cannot deal <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, okay i do want to mention that this whole thing like I want to criticize my camp, people on my camp, okay? Okay, go for it. Because a lot of people are saying like, oh my God, look at Islam, look at Islam, look at Islam, okay? And Islam is horrible. I agree with you, okay? But I'm not, this is not really as, this action, neither the fatwa or this action is Islamic. I mean, I know like, okay, so maybe, you know, maybe I'm just a Muslim who's doing taqiyya and I'm just acting like I'm a critic of Islam, but I'm actually like kind of trying to secretly defend Islam. Okay. Uh, that could maybe, be maybe. One, that one theory, but maybe I'm just being objective here. Okay. As bad as Islam, as bad as Islam is, this is, you can't just go willy nilly, um, take out people without like, a, without like a, a judge or something. You know what I mean? I mean, technically, there are some marjas that says whoever has blasphemes uh, the prophet, they have left Islam. And if they have left Islam, you could kind of do what you will without, without, a, without, a, without a Ghazi, without like a judge or something. But that's like not a accepted position, you know, almost like... So the what you're saying is that this would not stand in an Islamic court of law? 
No, I mean, maybe he would be executed, okay, based on Islam. I mean, I mean, he would, right? But there needs to be a hearing. There needs to be a judge. You know, there needs to be, I mean, also, you're like, okay, then, the, but, but we had a fatwa, okay? First of all, you had a fatwa by Khomeini. I mean, for Sunnis, you don't even have a god that marja, so you can't just be like, oh, yeah, marja. Like you don't have a marja, so there's no such a thing it was for Sunni. So you can't just be like, well, Khomeini said it's okay, so I'm gonna go do it. So that takes out all of the Sun this becoming legitimate for any Sunnis. So it remains the Shias, and only the Shias that had Khomeini as a marja. Okay, but even among the Shias that had Khomeini as a marja, this is like not a not a legitimate fatwa. You're issuing a fatwa on non-Islamic land for for something that happened is happening in non-Islamic land. Like this is not okay. This is not uh, this is not uh, Islamic. Okay. So, anyways, <laughs> this I just is think... not okay. Yeah, there's a lot about this that is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean this is not okay even by Islamic standards. No, I know, standards. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's a very good point. Um, oh, I had a thought that just immediately escaped my mind. Well, regardless, obviously, we are wishing Salman Rushdie a very quick and speedy recovery. Um, D is saying that there was even an American a professor who blamed the attack on Mossad. She sent me an article about this that blew my mind. And it seemed like kind of similar to your theory where it's like, obviously, Israel does not want the U.S. to engage with Iran on this nuclear issue. And so you're like maybe trying to mess up the nuclear talks. Um, and, uh, do you want me to read this comment? Oh, yes. Can you read this comment? So Sri Asha is saying, in a way, it was more about saving face than Islam. It was more about Khomeini remaining relevant and remaining the, have, keeping up this with this fantasy that he's the leader of the Islamic world. Okay. So this was, this whole anti rushdi movement was picking up without him riding that wave and he's like this cannot happen without me <laughs> i am now the leader i am the pope of the islamic world at that time it seemed like he was going for that okay and he was like okay this is happening because i made a fatwa on it, okay and people were like so he was just riding a wave he wanted to become relevant he, he wanted to be be just be relevant so that was it a lot of some people also suggest that i don't know uh, this this might this is this is a, not a conspiracy. This third story in the book, it's about the first story about in the book is a, the first dream sequence in the book is about Muhammad and the satanic verses. The third one, there are three dream sequences in the book, is about uh, a, a twenty a 20th century radical imam, which people understand to be Khomeini. So some people think it might have been personal. I don't think so. I think it was more about him thinking that this is like he needed to take advantage of this situation to be on the news mm -hmm. it was kind of uh, like trump he wanted to just be on the news whatever ah. whatever price necessary <laughs> so yeah. there's some you've been getting some interesting pushback in the live chat from oh, let's omar see on facebook omar is saying coming from a muslim background i can assure you that the vast majority is happy to see rushdie attacked even if they show otherwise for political correctness, even though most of them have no idea what the book says. A lot of hate has been accumulated over 30 years over this. Maybe the only people who are genuinely not happy about it are highly educated individuals, which represent a very tiny percentage of the 1.6 billion Muslims. Because you started um, this out saying, you know, oh, you know, we've seen a lot of people celebrating this, but that's not representative, blah, blah, blah. He's basically saying, okay, if that's the case, it's only the pushback is only representative of a tiny percentage. Okay, I mean, the 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 evidence for this is you coming from a Muslim background, because I come from a Muslim background as well, and I think not, I'm I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. I just I'm just saying that coming from a Muslim background is not really good in backing up your claim. Okay, maybe you're right. But I'm just saying you you need like you need to provide if you want to say what you're saying is true you're like based on this poll uh, done by this uh, you know 
organization, a very legitimate authoritative organization that does polling very well, right? Institution, I could tell you that this is the majority view, okay? What I can tell you is that I have seen many, 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 many Muslims celebrating it, but I have also seen many Muslims condemning it. Which one is the most? I don't know. Maybe you're right. Okay. I, I would actually, if I was going with my intuition, which is not a good source, okay, I would say you're probably right. The majority is in kind of, okay, I was, let me, let me correct. If I was going by my intuitions, okay, which is not at all a reliable source of information, I would say a minority would be like really, really happy. Like not like just like saying they're happy for saving face. Like they're just jizzing their pants. Okay. That's a minority. Okay. There's <laughs> you're such a way with there's, words. <laughs> there's an, another group of people who like, what's my duty to be, you know, it's obviously this was a bad man. And I mean, they're not like really happy, but they think like we should be happy because this is the scat man deserved it. So as a, as a good Muslim, they think like they have to believe that. Okay. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of other Muslims who say don't want to celebrate it, but they also don't want to condemn it. They're like, well, it's a bad thing, but the person responsible for it is himself. Okay. So it's unfortunate, but he's, he's at fault. So that's another group. Okay. And then another group is like, okay, this was a bad man, but this was not the right way to do it. We condemn this action. Okay, so this is a whole spectrum of different Muslims. And then we have a really tiny minority of Muslims, which I don't even know who uh, would say that this he's not even a bad man. Okay, but that's a very, very, very small fringe. Okay, this is my intuition that this is a spectrum um, again, but we don't have access to data. So don't I'm just acknowledging that they all exist. Right. So what I'm saying is that critics of Islam are pretending like the ones that don't uh, uh, the ones that condemn this do not even exist. Like they're not, I mean, we have like Dr. Uh, Shabir Ali. He's a, he's a major representative, right? Of mm -hmm. this, right? He condemned it. He oh, condemned but he's it. deviant. I know, but like he represents like a very, he's a very popular scholar. And mm -hmm. if you look at the comment section, there's a whole bunch of Muslims thanking him for coming out and condemning it. Right? So, I don't know, like they exist. I, I, I didn't say they're big. I didn't I didn't say they're small, they're big. I just say they're out there. Okay. And it's important for people to know that they they're out there. Um like oh what else? The general taste was all for it. Even you know, when people say trust me, just trust me. Just trust me. That's when you should trust people the least, okay? Because people only say trust me. When you have well, that not all, not only people usually say "trust me" when they when they don't have much to back it up. When they say "just trust me," like I'm sorry, Amar, I'm not gonna trust you. Who are you even? Why should I trust you? <laughs> okay. okay, okay. I don't know you. Um, I don't know. Trust you. I just love this comment from Captain Nadar. Keeping up with the Khomeinis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, in honor and in solidarity. With Salman Rushdie today, I wore my vintage the Ayatollah Khomeini sucks shirt. Yeah. Just to remind everyone, even in death, he still sucks. This is this you got this shirt like at what year like when was this shirt made? Like you didn't get it, but like when was this shirt made? So this is from 1979. Guys, this shirt was made in 1979, the year of the Islamic Revolution in Iran. This shirt. I don't know. I don't even know why you're wearing it. I think you should like take it off. And Only for special stuff. occasions like this. <laughs> I mean, you know, like this, like don't damage that thing. That thing is very special. Anyways, we should move on. Um, oh, here. Yeah. X Boson is saying, exactly, Armin. I know this guy who says, trust me all the effing time, not knowing what he talks about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you were confirming something else. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. 
So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.